with a smooth and beautiful round head, it is only fitting that our next guest would play a basketball mastermind. He is Red Auerbach in Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty. You can see it Sunday nights on HBO. Please welcome Michael Chiklis. <laughs> I haven't seen you in quite some time. It's been a while. It has been. A, you look well, good. You, thank you, you look man. healthy. Feel great. You look yeah. vigorous. I'm feeling strong, but I, I feel like there's something wrong with me. What, really? Yeah, I, I just can't stop telling this this story. I, I, it's, what story? Well, thanks for asking. Oh. <laughs> uh, well, tell any story you yeah, want. Well, that's not, why we're here. It's about my daughter. My daughter, oh. uh, you know, uh, about three years ago, my daughter was asked to go jogging with a friend. Now, how old is your daughter? She's 28 now. Okay, but at the right. time, she's 25. And she goes jogging with her friend. And I call her later, and I go, how'd the run go? And she goes, eh, you know, Dad, I, I, I barely made it a, a mile. I, I, I thought it was going to croak. I go, oh, that's OK. You were never a runner. It's fine. She goes, no, no, no. I'm 25. i got to be able to run. So she starts running. And a one mile turns into two, two, four, ten. So now, four months ago, she walks into the house, and she announces to my wife and I, that she and her boyfriend have registered for the LA Marathon. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah, right. So I go. I didn't know where we were headed so with this. So I go. <laughs> I look at her and I go, "Why?" <laughs> and she goes, "No, because I, I just have to do it. I have to do it." So I watched them train for like four months, and wouldn't you know? Right, it happened this Sunday. So right before they're about to go, I have to go to New York to promote Winning Time. Oh, uh, oh, so you didn't... So I'm going to miss it, oh. right? And I'm so upset. So I'm there, and it's Sunday, this past Sunday, and I'm all this nervous energy, and she FaceTimes me, and it's 5 o'clock in the morning here. It's pitch dark, and she's at Dodger Stadium, and she's like, Dad, uh, what, we're going to do this. And I'm like, you got this kid. Go for it. You got it. It's 26.2 miles. It's daunting. Yeah. I'm like, do this. So I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I go downstairs to have breakfast, and I, I tell... The hostess that she's <laughs> running it. I tell the waitress. I go out into the streets and I see that people are running in New York. They have numbers on. And I go to this officer. I go, officer, what's going on? He goes, yeah, they're, they're running the half marathon. I go, no, they're not. My daughter's running the full marathon. <laughs> he goes, so, you know, so he's freaking out. And, I, you know, my wife calls me. And God bless my wife. She's not very technically adept, right? Okay. And I say to her, listen, can you FaceTime me when she's about to cross the finish line so right. I can see it happen? And she's like, no problem, I'll do it. So she calls me a few hours later, and she's like, she's almost there. She's, she'd been going with my youngest daughter to points along the way and encouraging her as she ran by. And now she's at the finish line, and she calls me, and I'm looking at the phone, and she switched it around, but then when she picked it up, I think she hit a button again, because it switches back, and all I could see is a picture of her forehead. <laughs> so, oh, you have it. Oh. I, took a, I took a screenshot. Here. OK. Oh, all right. Oh, yeah, let's. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> wait look, a minute. Look, look, look. Let's zoom look in at, there if we oh, can. No, no. Look, 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 look. <laughs> look at me. That's you yelling yeah, at your I'm wife? I'm like, no, 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 turn it around. <laughs> Turn the thing around. And then what do we have here? Can we? And, uh... and then, but thankfully, the people of the LA uh, Marathon do something really nice. They take photographs of everybody as they cross the finish line, and they go by number and they post them online so you can get them. So, uh, thankfully, I was able to get this shot the next okay. one of her crossing. Oh the wow! Line. She's really. Well, congratulations. Now, is triumph right there. Isn't that amazing? Will you run with her maybe next year? Are you on drugs? <laughs> maybe. Well, she. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the phone, by the uh, way. Uh, Let's uh, see who's in your address book now. Uh, well, you? <laughs> you uh, well, that's pretty. Well, that's. I can see you're very proud. It's actually very charming to see that. Well, I think you know, for someone who couldn't run a mile, three years later she runs a marathon. It just shows a certain. Grit, you know? Speaking of grit, yeah. tell me a little bit about, uh, before we talk about Winning Time, this movie that you, it's a true story oh. about, I read about this yeah. guy, a guy who, well, tell the, uh, the, the senior. The, uh, yeah. the, uh, the, it's a movie uh, that I just uh, finished shooting called The Senior, and I play the senior. It's 
about the oldest um, college football player in the history of college football. This guy named Mike Flint, it's a true story. Uh, when he was a senior in college, he got thrown out of college for fighting. Uh, and for many, many years, he regretted it. And when he was 59 years old, he was sent an invitation to go to a reunion. He was like, I, I can't go to this. I didn't even graduate. I was thrown out of school. I'm embarrassed. And his wife got more than she bargained for because she told him to go. She, she got him to go. And when he was there, they were like, hey, man, you look like you could still play. And he was like, well, I could. He was like, well, why don't you uh, try out? You're still eligible. And he got this idea that if he did it, maybe he could redeem himself. And it's an incredible redemption tale. And he did it. And did you play? Did you get on the field and I, you played football? I did 90% of my football. I was, uh, my eyebrows still hurt from this. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, you know, listen, I'm 58 years old. I was too young for the role. <laughs> Does it make you think about Tom Brady, who's, what, 44 years old? And... I wrote him. I texted Tom, and I'm like, Tom, you're no longer the oldest guy in the field. you got to help me out. <laughs> he gave me nothing. Well, yeah. You know what he gave me? Football's f***ing hard. <laughs> That's what he wrote? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, good luck. <laughs> He goes, you read my book, Pliability, pal. And that was it. I love that you have Tom Brady's phone number because I know you're a Boston guy. You're a fan of the Celtics. And now you get to play Red Arback, who's like, uh, to me, a villain because I'm a lifelong Lakers fan. Are but you really? I, I am. Well, I'm so disappointed. Yeah, well, <laughs> right uh, back at you, you know? But, <laughs> but what I wonder is, like, when you were a kid, you know, because we're pretty close in age, yeah. did you ever imagine you'd be playing this, like, I don't know, Red Orbach seemed like he was, uh, like, 70 years old when he was probably 30 well, years right. old. Well, right, he was, you know, he, he stopped coaching when I was, like, three. Yeah. But then he was the president of, of, the, of, team, yeah. of the team. And I all Smoked I, those big yeah, cigars. Can you imagine in this day and age if with, like, two and a half minutes left, the guy at the end of the bench just lights up a stogie to just oh. to say, you know, it's over, it's over. Oh, he would be torn would to be, pieces. Exactly. Yeah. It would be, you know, so he he was a one of a kind for sure. And my the thing is, I just wish my father was around to see this. Right, yeah. It was him. He was the one who was a huge dyed in the wool red R back fan, you know, and he would go, see that guy, that guy's a winner. You know what I mean? Really? And, uh, yeah, because he understood, you know, plus I I I you know, I read Bill Russell's book. Uh-huh. And that was the most interesting thing about researching Red, is that Red Auerbach was, you know, I know he's a villain in this mm -hmm. uh, to any Lakers fan, but if you played for him, they loved Red. Mm -hmm. And because he listened to his guys, he collaborated with his guys. There's, you don't win nine championships as a coach and then another seven uh, as a president if you're not creating an atmosphere of champions. And he, he gave them agency. He made them feel like they were participating in their own life. Well, speaking of team players, you um, you were with the whole cast at the premiere event here, <laughs> and you uh, jumped out in front of everybody <laughs> with your Boston Celtics yeah. t-shirt on, on the purple red carpet of all things. Well, I was gonna wear a suit like everybody else uh -huh. in this thing, and I'm in my closet, and I literally see the shirt. And it just was like calling to me. It was like, and I went, <laughs> I went should I? Should I do this? And I went, yeah, I should do this. This is why people don't like Boston fans, right here. <laughs> there it is. Well, it's I great to rap. see you. The show is called Winning Time, The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty, Sunday nights, HBO and HBO Max. Michael Chiklis, everybody. We'll be back with Allison Russell. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel, and I am not allowed to eat this cookie until you click the subscribe button. So please click now. I'm hungry.